ओम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यजातर्गत पश्यन्नात्म मयया बहिर्वोद्भूत यथा निद्रया यक्षात्ते प्रबोध समये स्वात्मा तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवाकुरो जगदीद प्राण निर्विकन माया कल्पितेशकालकलना वैचिचित्रीक मयावी विजृंभयोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त ओ सहनात सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओ शाति 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 सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सेकेंड मंत्र यदर्चिमदर्चिमदुभ्यो अणुश्च यस्लोका निहिता लोकिन तदे तदक्षर ब्रह्म सप्राण तदुवांगमनस्तदे तत्सत्यम तदमृत तेद्धव्य सौम्य विधि सो इन दिस टू सैक्शन ऑफ दिस सेकेंड चैप्टर the upanishad uh, is presenting the central teaching called paravidya this has been introduced the subject matter of the mundaka upanishad is a paravidya plus a paravidya of course paravidya is a main thing but then this is how it has been introduced in the first section of the first chapter vevidye veditavye parachayva paracha and uh, aparavidya of course we talked uh, in the first section itself and then later paravidya has been uh, i mean in- initiated Paravidya is called this Gnana Yoga. That is the in the second chapter. First chapter, of course, has a Paravidya. Definitely, we defined Aksharam. If you if you remember, we defined Aksharam there, uh, uh, and uh, also a Paravidya also has been mentioned. And in this uh, second chapter, well, definitely it is ba- mainly Paravidya or Gnana Yoga, in which what is this Paravidya or Gnana Yoga? Well. basically one pursues the knowledge of the cause of the creation and the cause of the creation is brahman called aksharam here in mundaka upanishad and which is equated with the atma of course and therefore atma is the cause of the creation is a paravidya that knowledge of atma as a cause of creation is called paravidya anyway and what is this um, cause of the creation that also we have seen the the four features of that that the cause of the creation is ekam cause of the creation is saram cause of the creation is nityam cause of the creation is satyam so basically cause must be one that is very simple to understand and cause must be the essence of the entire karya prapancha cause must not undergo any change it should be un- unchanging that is nityam and cause is satyam the cause can never be negated effect can be negated well and effect is born and gone therefore it is anityam also and then uh, effect can never be the saram effect can never be the essence and effect effects are many right karyams are many from one cause you get many 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 effect anyway and so and okay this is karanam and the karanam we call it as a ishvara or aksharam etc and uh, and knowledge pertaining to that is paravidya of course now the question will be uh, where this karanam is located ishvara where is it located so far as religious domain is concerned well ishvara has a location because ishvara in the religious domain ishvara which is jagat karanam well he it is looked upon as a particular name and form and if it has a particular name and form definitely it has a location and therefore in a religious domain always ishvara has a location by kuntha or kailas or whatever but here which we are when we are saying it is jagat karanam 
and it is the essence of the whole effect, whole world, then the such a such a essence of the entire world, which is the cause of the creation, that Ishvara, is located where? And that is, uh, well, if you, you cannot say now a given name and form, because there is Karana, any name and form is a effect. So if you say Ishvara is a particular name and form, it is no more a Karana, it is actually a effect. And therefore Karana, which is the essence of the all names and forms, Will be will cannot be located at a one place. Then, if it is located at one place, it will have a given name and form. If it has a given name and form, it is no more a karanam, but it becomes effect. And therefore, definitely now in a religious spiritual domain, well, jagat karanam Ishvara, which is the essence of everything, is is it, it is available in every name and form, not a given name and form. The essence is always available in all the names and forms. Essence, so basically essence must be behind everything. And for that we yesterday we saw the example also, like gold is an essence of all the ornaments, all the names and forms, then gold has to be behind all the forms. Gold must be present in, in all the names and forms. So therefore here now no more location because it is available in all names and forms. So Karan Ishwara in a spiritual domain is uh, is everywhere. It has a no specific location. It's an essence behind all the names and forms which are changing. The Karan, which is non-changing, which is Nityam, is present in all the names and forms, all if I mean effect, uh, which which are which is changing all the time. Anyway, now if it is available in all the names and forms as essence as a non-changing thing, well then it must be available in a given name and form called this body mind sense complex also now so now to bring it to me ultimately jagat karanam ishwara we have to look like this so karanam ishwara must be present in me also if karana ishwara is present in this name and form then it is present in this name and form also and this is a this is a very big progress to jump from here to here that is where vedanta is actually and we are seeing of course we will go back and forth of course and uh, look into the thing that it is one thing alone anyway so now we are turning attention for that karana ishvara to ourselves we are paying attention to ourselves and uh, uh, so basically here also now now here where is it available that's the question now this body mind sense complex is like all names and forms and it is subject to arrival and departure they are changing and so you keep on dismissing these names and forms and come to that non-changing witness principle, witness consciousness principle within us, which is called Karanam. Because Karanam is a non-changing. That is what we have, we have thought of. And therefore, so here in a given name and form, which, uh, well, which, which is continuously changing, there is something which is non-changing. And that is the I am that is non-changing and that is the basically a witness consciousness witness of all the changes in this name and form you are able to i cannot tell but you are able to tell what all changes have occurred in a your body in your mind what is occurring what is going uh, what is arriving what is departing everything you are able to tell so well your own experiences reveal that you as a conscious being is non-changing, witnessing all the changes in, div in given body, mind, sense complex, which are names and forms. And so a essence of this given name and for particular this body, mind, sense complex is this witness consciousness principle, which must be Jagat Karanam. Because Jagat Karanam is an essence, essence of all names and forms. Therefore, it is an essence of this name and form also. Then what is that essence in this name and form is this consciousness, witness and consciousness principle, which is non-changing and therefore it fits into the definition of cause. Cause is uh, all the time non-changing and effect is all the time changing. So here, if you analyze, something is all the time changing, including senses and including your prana, all the functions, all and the cross body, mind, 
and uh, your uh, your memory everything keeps on your knowledge everything keeps changing and changing your emotions everything changing but i the witness con witness consciousness witness of all these changes is non changing all the changes basically while well, uh, to be experienced uh, uh, requires a non changing principle and otherwise you will not be able to with reference to something which is non changing you are able to tell what are the changes and therefore i am with the witness consciousness well is a witness of all the changes in a given name and form that must be the cause of the uh, that must be the cause and that is witness consciousness may be the jagat karanam ishvara okay so we have crystallized to this uh, sakshi chaitanyam consciousness principle witness consciousness principle which is available outside as the changeless existence principle how do you arrive at that that we have already discussed in section 1 of this chapter itself but i in short i am telling you once again we have discussed elaborately in the first section of the second chapter we are right now in the second section of the second chapter and i have told you what we discussed as a jagat karan ishwara as existence principle is the consciousness principle that is discussed in the second section so what is discussed as a sat jagat karanam is discussed as a chit in this second section right but anyway i will tell you once again that how okay this non changing witness consciousness uh, fits into the definition of cause of the entire prapancha well that is fine but then to to say it is a cause of the entire prapancha that consciousness should be outside also well that consciousness is available outside as a existence principle so then existence must be the cause of the entire universe you mean yeah how well again definition of a cause ekam saram nityam satyam ekam exist what do you find in the in this world please tell me what do you find a common denominator in the entire creation even two things are not similar ekam when you are saying you are trying to find a cause in the creation what do you find which is one and which is available in all that must be the cause it must be one and available in all existence existence start from the space space is and then everything and then i am not going in detail everything has that isness means that isness must be ekam pervading all must be the cause one but that does not suffice the uh, definition of cause we have to see all the four factors existence we have found as a one thing which is available in the creation most common denominator but it should be the essence also saram existence is essence what is a what is the essence of this is existence nothing if you take a essence means what if you take away the essence the given thing won't exist that's called essence <laughs> and therefore existence is something well if you take away then this name and form won't remain at all and therefore that existence which is available in everyone which is one must be the essence also and that is essence and that is essence also and well existence third thing nityam that existence does not undergo any change what exist may change and it is changing but that exist does not change what exist keeps changing what exists means given name and form oh, that is changing right like this name and form exist is clip is okay now you you break the clip or you change the shape etc well you give a you will give some other name because the form has changed but that existence continue right existence isness continue and then again you break into powder or something then again isness continue oh that shows in the given fleeting names and forms changing names and form which is the existence 
Val is nityam. Existence is something which is non-changing. So existence is common to all names and forms, per pervades all the names and forms, essence of all the names and forms, and it is non-changing also. Please understand that today's lecture, this existence consciousness, existence consciousness, we are not able to relate. This is third thing. Fourth, Satyam. Existence is something which can never be negated. Even I should not say that. <laughs> Anything which is negated becomes non-existent. Right? It, <laughs> and therefore, if you say existence, well, it is Satyam. Therefore, Sadeva Satyam. That's how Chandogya says. Sadeva Satyam. Existence is something which anything can be negated. Existence can never be negated. After negating existence, it becomes non-existent. Then where is the question of an existence? Anyway, so existence E, which is pervading all the names and forms, which is one, that is, you cannot, somebody please tell me how you call one existence. What is the difference between easiness of this clip and this clip? Please tell. Any difference you will tell me, it, it, it does not pertain, it, it does not pertain to the existence, it pertains to name and form. Any difference you will tell, it pertains to name and form. It does not pertain to ex existence. And therefore existence, which is one alone, which is the essence of every name and form, which cannot be negated and which is non-changing, even in the, all the changing names and forms, is the cause of the creation. That existence is available in this body mind sense complex, in this given name and form, not merely as existence, but also as consciousness. But how can you say that existence and is this consciousness? How, how can you say like that? I feel there are two op shoot, shoots in there. So, well, there is existence also and something co consciousness. Sir, I am is the most common denominator. I stands for consciousness. M stands for existence. And therefore, I am has a one entity. It is called Samanadhikaranyam. It is, it is, it is Samanadhikaranyam. It, it is in opposition. These two words denote not two things. It is one thing. That's your experience also. I am. When you say I am, do you think it is one entity or two entities? I means the consciousness. M means the definitely this um, existence. Well, that is more. That is non-changing principle in all the states given to the human. I mean, avail available in the human experience. It is available. Uh, that, so, and that is how I am able to say that I am conscious of never changes. What I am conscious of ever changes. What I am conscious of ever changes. That I am conscious of never changes. Means this consciousness does not undergo any change. That's how I say I am conscious of this. I am conscious of my mind. I am conscious of my body. I am conscious of this. I am conscious of now a changing mind. I am conscious of this emotion. Now I am conscious of that emotion. Now I am conscious of my, my powerful eyes. Now I am conscious of my weak eyes. So all names and forms keep changing. That I am conscious of, I am conscious of never changes. And therefore, that I am, well, which is the most common denominator in, in this given name and form, is this existence consciousness principle that, that is available outside as merely existence principle for some reason. Here it is available as not just, but that existence principle is here, the, 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 the same existence principle is here also. How can you say? I, am, I have already told you, it is ekam nityam saram, the essence of uh, the, the essence of all names and forms, is one existence. 
and therefore if it is available the existence available as a essence in this name and form the same existence available in this name and form also and not just existence due to some reason you know the reason i i am not going to tell you due to some reason that existence is also the consciousness and that is that is non changing principle and therefore what is available as existence and consciousness that alone is the cause of entire universe could you follow now so this is how we have to uh, think <clears throat> so that i am conscious of is a uh, therefore turn your attention to non variable awareness turn your attention to this non variable consciousness which is there in you all the time all the time means what all the three states all the three states please try to prove that consciousness is not changing it's enough the consciousness is not changing means existence also is not undergoing any change and well that existence also is available outside which is most pervading which is essence which is non changing which is cannot be negated and that yeah. then this consciousness alone is the cause well, of the entire creation so okay. that's our experience i told you in the, all the three states so not only throughout this um, uh, jagrat avastha even when the world disappears when you go to dream the world goes this t- this time goes this world goes this space goes but a new world will appear with a new time and new space naturally the time is quite different there in there well in a in a, in a dream in a one moment uh, you you are you are grown up and you have completed education also and you married and you have a children and grandchildren everything within one minute so okay and therefore that time scale in a in a dream state is very very different you are in a in a dream you are suddenly landing into a chapati of a bombay eating bail yeah how can you go because you are right now here and it takes a lot of time you have to book the ticket and you have to undergo a covid test and what not and afterwards you have to do journey and then reaching bombay and then oh my god and so but in a dream you find yourself within a moment you are find yourself in somewhere in india or so and doing things etc so that shows the time scale of a world of a of a waking world and time scale of a dream world is very very different so well so in a waking state time is different space is different of world is different i mean objects are different in a dream state time is different space is different and uh, well and the world uh, objects are also different but still i am conscious of never undergoes a change even time changes you are not changing now re- please connect with my yesterday's talk in the evening the cause of the time and space while it is beyond time and space which exist even before time and space which is never affected by the time and space could you follow and therefore so i am conscious of waking world i am conscious of a dream world i am conscious of a dream time i am conscious of a waking time that shows i am is something which does not undergo within a time scale and not only that further proof even when time and space resolves you continue right and therefore you must be a nityam i am that consciousness existence is nityam non changing satyam cannot be negated which is essence of all the three states without consciousness where is the state where is the question of a waker dreamer or a deep sleeper or a waking world if consciousness is not there waker and the waking world do not exist if consciousness is not there or existence is not there where is the question of waker exist waker is waking world is so that i am who is a existence principle consciousness principle well is the essence of all the three states waker waking dreamer dreaming dream world and deep sleeper etc well or in blankness 
So I am conscious of blankness also. Well, I cannot declare that in a sleep. To declare, I require speech in the mind. So well, but I cannot declare it, but I am aware of the blankness in deep sleep state. That's your own experience. I need not have to say. And that is how you are able to say when you get up that I did not experience anything. Well, the absence of all experiencing, I was conscious of. Right? So I am conscious of does not undergo any change. What I am conscious of changes. That I am conscious of never changes. But Swamiji, okay, that I am consciousness, that is okay. But then uh, I am existence also. Yeah. So you are not existent in all the three states. You are saying you are consciousness, but you are not existent. No, 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 Swamiji. Yeah, I am, I am there. And I am conscious of both are there. Well, that's true. And therefore, the existence which is here, which is non-changing principle available outside, is the same as consciousness. What is Sat is this Chit. What is Chit is this Sat. Consciousness alone exists. That's my own experience. Existence also does not undergo any change. Or consciousness does not, does not go undergo any change. And therefore, well, so therefore, this is called Tvam Padartha Vicharaha. So basically, Tvam means this Jiva. The implied meaning of this Jiva, the Lakshartha of Jiva is this consciousness existence. Lakshartha of a Jiva is this I am. And Vachartha, the direct meaning of this Jiva is I am and you add something. Yeah. So when you say I am a human being, it is a direct meaning of a jiva. Tvampadartha. When you say I am, I drop every other thing. Because I am is this uh, consciousness, right? That I am conscious of. That is this I am. What you are conscious of, that you are adding again in this Tvampadartha, which you should not do. You should put a break after I am. Then you are having a reality about yourself. When you say I am human being, gone. The human being is a given name and form, which is not you, which is ever changing. You are lumping together with the reality of you. That is I am. So just I am is a most common fact. You, you just think during a waking state, how many times you must have told I am. You might be changing whatever is after that you are adding that you are that you keep on changing. I am disturbed. I am this. I am that. I am that. Including I am having a bad prarabdha, etc. Everything. But that I am is the most common factor. Try to replace I am. Or please try to find a difference between just two I am. You cannot find. Unless you add a changing name and form into that. You are adding a changing name and form into a non-changing reality. You should not do. This is called Chit Achit Granthi. Name and form is Jadam. Which is not you. Which is Anatma which you are lumping together with a non-changing reality called I am. And therefore, Jivatma Vichara is paying attention to this consciousness which is you. Now, this is the first stage. Now, second stage. Next stage is learn to equate this consciousness not just with the body or mind or thought, but this, um, I mean, this with the non-variable consciousness, may you learn to equate with uh, Paramatma, which is Karanam of this entire universe. So consciousness in me is basically Karanam, is the, is the cause of the entire universe. And for that, you will have to take a most common denominator that I am the existence, which is non-changing, non-variable, and that existence I am experiencing everywhere as a non-changing factor. And therefore, that is the, and that is essence, 
that is non-changing, that cannot be negated, and that is one. Well, so that existence, I mean, this consciousness principle is the existence principle, non-variable existence principle outside, which is the cause of the entire universe. So next step is equating this Jivatma, which is a consciousness, well, equating with the Paramatma, which is a Karanishwara, <clears throat> is a second stage. And then, but that is okay, but still, you know, I'm not able to feel that I'm, I have expanded so much that I am, I am per per pervading everything. I, I don't feel like that. It is not a question of feeling. That, that you don't feel is because that I is just placed here. In your, when, when I say I, in my eye, the body also shines equally. Then where is a question of the whole world? Well, definitely resides in me or etc, etc. So, well, I becomes just consciousness. That is the question. When you say I means again in my mind human being comes. If given body, mind, sense complexes, then there is not a question of that you are karana. You are effect. You are not a cause. When you say I am a human being, means you are effect. And you try to then equate the whole world. I mean, you are the cause of the entire world. Well, that, that will never... That is how the first step requires that you are not a human being, you are just a consciousness. You have to understand the implied meaning of I. That's what I was telling you. Not a direct meaning of I. A direct meaning of I is I am and later you have to fill up the gap. That's a, that, that's a direct meaning. But just I am is the reality of me and nothing else which is available in all the three states of experience as a non-changing principle, as the essence of all the three states. And that is this consciousness, because consciousness is, is the conscious, uh, I mean, this consciousness that I am, well, that is even uh, aware of the blankness, well, or non-experience of anything in a deep sleep state. It's also, I'm conscious of a waking world, I'm conscious of a dream world, therefore, I am that, uh, well, that consciousness principle, which is a, which is conscious of everything in the three states, is the non-changing factor. That is the implied meaning. And to in that consciousness, which is I, entire world resides. Because I'm I'm existence also, I'm consciousness also. Entire world resides, and that is of course Shastra is doing for us, equating Jivatma with Paramatma, which we call Mahavakya. So the Karanishwara, which alone is appearing as everything. And uh, well, that is how many? Well, naturally it is one. So one Karanishwara alone appears as a Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Jalam, Prithvi, etc. And that Karanishwara with a given name and form is Akasha. Karanishwara with a given name means existence consciousness plus a given name form is Akasha. That existence consciousness plus a, another name and form is a Vayu, etc., etc. And well, you can extend it to the this body mind sense complex also. Well, basically, this body mind sense complex also is nothing but existence consciousness plus name and form called physical body, or or a or a subtle body, or a, even a even a causal body. So, and that which is continuously changing, that existence consciousness which is non-changing plus name and form which is changing is this entire world. So this is the progress of the Upanishad. And so when you equate this Jivatma, I mean the essence of the Jivatma, which is consciousness and existence, with that Karana Ishvara is, is called Mahavakya Vichara. That's Aikya Jnanam. And um, so in every shloka, basically, first consciousness will be identified. And means you are just consciousness and existence, nothing else. You deserves to be identified. Then it is equated with the Ishvara. And so you can keep on adding a given name and form and come ultimately again to this, this name and form. And you can say, well, that Ishvara, which is just Karan Ishvara, which is nothing but the existence and consciousness, which is Ekam, which is Saram, which is Nityam, which is Satyam. Well, you keep on adding different names and forms, which are all the time changing and you find the entire world is there. So, Sarvam Isha, Isha Vasya Vidam Jagat. This is the development of the second mantra. Now we have to see the mantra. We, I, what I have told you is a just essence of this second mantra. Anyway, 
वट सेज इयर अणोह अणीयान महतो महियान एक्सेट्रा यद अर्चिमत पहले लेट्स लेट्स टेक फर्स्ट दिस यद अर्चिमत अर्चिमत मीन्स अनदर इट्स अनदर वर्ड फॉर आविहि विच इज यूज इन द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट मंत्र आई हैव टोल्ड यू आविहि इज नथिंग बट अ लाइट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस और सेल्फ रिविलिंग कॉन्शियसनेस दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अर्चिमत अर्चि ही मीन्स अ लाइट एक्चुअली मत मीन्स द इट्स अ पजेसिव एफिक्स वन वो इज पजेसिंग लाइट means one which is a self revealing consciousness so what was the meaning of a avihi in the first mantra is the meaning of archimat in the second mantra self revealing consciousness okay and now okay uh, where do you find this light of consciousness where is that self revealing consciousness yet anubhyah anucha it is it is subtler than even an atom means it is not visible to any one of the organs of experience it is not available for perception that's all it's not available for perception not available to the sense organs so to anubhya anucha means subtler than the atom by telling well the five sense organs but see what happens is this five sense organ can experience shabda sparsha rupa rasa and ganda they belong to what they belong to name and form they belong to the world name and form so karan ishwara bel basically he does not have any of these attributes existence and consciousness is free of all the attributes but samajhi that is attribute existence is attribute of atma or uh, of a ishwara which is jagat karan existence is attribute and consciousness also is attribute no it is not an attribute it's its nature it's not an attribute if you t- if you say it is an attribute well definitely you need something some base some substance in which the property resides attribute resides it's not like that so well definitely this this is a swarupam this is a nature so well not that atma has existence we will will talk about that not atma has existence atma is existence not atma has consciousness like this has green color it's not like that this has green color so it's a property and substance both this property resides in a substance called clay that's not the thing so atma is a substance and in which consciousness and and existence well those two properties no no it's a nature of it it's a swarupa atma means existence atma means consciousness that's all anyway so well karan uh, ishwara does not have any property called shabda sparsha rupa rasa and ganda and therefore that karan ishwara or that consciousness and existence well which is not available for perception then how we how shastra is going to communicate it says it is subtler than even the atom it is so by using word anu anu means a small thing we may think that karan ishwara is a very small it is not small it is ekam pervading everything and therefore it is not small it is subtler so well shankaracharya ji very nicely says anu who means it is subtler like anu not small like anu not small in dimension it is subtler why why do you call subtler because not available for perception anything which is not available for perception is called subtler but why it is not available for perception because it does not have shabda sparsha rupa rasa and ganda and the, so that sense organ can perceive them can grasp them and therefore we want to say it is not a, it's not an object of perception and so it is subtle to convey the idea of a subtlety well we say it is anu anubhya anu subtler than even anu anu is not visible and therefore it is even subtler than the anu well subtle means you are not visible but uh, like anu means uh, i mean it is not visible it's invisible and it's not small in size but how can you say let's take it as a atma well this uh, the jagat karan ishwara is very small why in size why what is the what is your problem even saying that because shastra does not agree i i want to con- tell that of course we di- we discuss this if you re- if you remember while talking about atma we have discussed one of that purupaksha of course i was in india at that time i said some people say atma is anu some people say atma is of a madhyama size of a size of the body right we dismiss all these things but anyway shastra itself dismisses how in katha upanishad very beautifully in first chapter second section 28th mantra anoho aniyan 
महतो महिया इट इज सटलर देन द सटलेस्ट एन इवन बिगर देन द बिगेस्ट एनी गिवन थिंग साइमल्टेनियसली कैन नेवर बी आई मीन स्मॉलर देन द स्मॉलेस्ट एंड बिगर देन द बिगेस्ट कैन नेवर बी देन वाई वाई आर दे आर सेंग लाइक दिस एंड कंफ्यूजिंग इट वॉन्ट्स टू कन्वे इट हैज नो डायमेंशन इट इज इट हैज नो डायमेंशन ए गिवन थिंग स्मॉलर देन द स्मॉलेस्ट एंड बिगर देन द बिगेस्ट means it is everything it is all pervading it has no particular dimension that's what it wants to convey and therefore anubhya anushya so anu as i told you it is subtle and uh, cha also so you can say bigger also so it's like akasha also so this is a this is up, up to this is jivatma yat archimat anubhyascha anohano anohaniya etc and anyway so this is uh, one thing yad archimat anubhya anu i am sorry not aniyan yad archimat anubhya anu cha this is indicating the implied meaning of jivatma archimat self revealing consciousness when self revealing consciousness comes you should not go beyond yourself you should not go beyond yourself to find to make uh, the consciousness an object of perception or anything consciousness self revealing consciousness is this i nothing else and therefore outside means you, you have to search for existence that's another thing we don't want to go and therefore we have already done it so basically archimat indicates yourself self revealing consciousness therefore that is the jivas swarupam basically after doing a viveka and uh, you know keeping yourself away from this all given name and form which is all the time changing you are merely the witness consciousness which is not changing which is basically a witness of all the changes occurring in this name and form that is archimat and therefore archimat indicates a implied meaning of jivatma why why you are saying like this because i want to ultimately prove that mahavakya is going on right now so i have to take both the sides jivatma is parmatma and therefore i have to at least first show that there is a there is a description of a jivatma in its own nature taking implied meaning by bhagatyaga lakshana etc so basically this anubhya anucha well indicates i'm sorry archimat indicates jivatma and anubhyanu it is subtler than the means it is never an object of perception means if it is anything which is not an object of perception will never be an object of any pramana given to the human being because the sense organs are the basic pramana anything which is pratyaksha is the moola pramana pratyaksha is a moola pramana is a strongest i should say strongest is is maybe i don't know whether this is a proper word or but it's a let's use this is a moola pramana and it's a very basic um, i mean the means of knowledge given to the human being not only here in a, in a, in a transaction also in a court and everywhere the ultimate the witness is considered to be uh, i mean i mean his statement is considered most powerful because he has seen the incident i with his own eyes so perception is a basic pramana anyway and here it says well anubhyanu subtler and by that well it says it is never an object of perception means it is not a well it is not an object of inference not an object of presumption not an object of i mean uh, any other pramana upamana etc and therefore it is not an object oh if it is not an object and still it is self revealing consciousness oh sir that is you that subject if it is not an object it it can never fall into an object of uh, any pramana then it must be a subject and therefore anubhya anucha also indicates a jivatma in its own nature that is subject so self revealing consciousness is the meaning of this archimat anubhya anucha that indicates tam padarth tam padartha analysis this is tam padartha analysis now jumping tvam is equated with tat immediately yasmin lokaha nihitaha lokinascha 
Yasmin, that, that, in that self-revealing consciousness, Yasmin means in that, means in that self-revealing consciousness which, it, which we talk to you, which is the real nature of this Jivatma, which is Archimat, which is even subtler than the subtlest. Well, Sarve Lokaha Nihitaha. Now equating this Jivatma to Paramatma. So Yasmin in that consciousness principle, Lokaha Nihitaha, all the 14 Lokas in the form of these names and forms are based. It is Jagatadhar. We are going to clarify further, but take it right now. So it is Jag it is it is Vishwadhar. It's Adhara, it's a support of everything. In it's a basis for entire universe, which consists of 14 lokas. So Sarve Lokaha Nihitaha. All the worlds are placed. Nihitam means placed. They are based, etc. So so it is, I mean. Every, therefore, this, uh, this, this, uh, I mean, this consciousness must have, must not have any dimension. If it has a dimension, it cannot be a, I mean, a basis for whole universe. Like, like you see the table. Table has a certain dimension. Then table can accommodate something of a smaller size, right? Of a smaller size. I, I mean, you can place this uh, lamp or you can place the computer and this, this, etc. But if I tell you I want to place the whole building in, on this table, <laughs> it is not possible. So here it says, Yasmin this Chaitanya, Sarve Lokaha Nihitaha, all the Lokas, and definitely the bodies also in the varieties of the Lokas, and all the minds, all the gross bodies, all the subtle bodies, etc., all are placed. Means that Chaitanya must be free from the size. Body has a size. And even the world has a size. And the things in, the, uh, in, in this world also have a size. Everything has a size. But this consciousness, which is nothing but the self-revealing. And I would like, I will go back, I would like to, I mean, um, go back to the first mantra also. Which is said as a sannihita, which is most proximate to me. And which is self-revealing and most proxy to me, proxy, proximate to me. And which has manifested in the heart, well, as a very I, in that I consciousness, all the worlds are placed. I mean, definitely, that I must be free from the size. If it can accommodate all the worlds, means it is free from the size. So, consciousness is in the body, if, uh, or uh, body is in the consciousness. Now you can, you yourself can decide. Well, it is not, and suppose, if you say consciousness is in the body, correct, but still it is not limited by the boundaries of the body. Then if I, if I utter these words, I remember five points of the consciousness, which we have discussed, which is given by Vanacharya, very beautiful it is. Consciousness is not a part, product or property of a given body, of a body. It is not a part of the body. Any part of the body is located in the body. Part is within the body. Any property is also in the body. And if it is a if it is a product of the body, well, definitely that is also non-separate from the body. So basically, consciousness is not a part, product, or property of the body. It may be subtle body or it may be a gross body. That I am not specifying. Second. Consciousness is not, if, if it is not a part, product and property of the body, then it is independent of the body. Part, product and property are not independent of the body. Part of the body is not independent of the body. Product of the body is not independent of the body. Product means a karyam. Karyam can never be separate from the karana. What is going on? Anyway, so uh, and so if it is not part, product and pro property, then it is independent of the body. If it is independent of the body, consciousness is not limited by the boundaries of the body, by the size of the body. And uh, this is third. And then the third thing, consciousness is basically independent 
and it is it is not limited by the boundary of the body it pervades the body makes the body sentient or alive sentient let's say sentient makes the body sentient and this is a third then fourth so if it is independent of the body whatever may be the condition of the body is not the condition of the self is not the condition of the consciousness so even after fall of the body consciousness does not fall consciousness survives atma survives the fall of the body and then fourth well consciousness needs a medium called body for transaction in absence of body you will not be able to uh, recognize the existence of the body it does not mean it is not existent it you will not be able to recognize the existence of the body because body is ultimately the medium in which the consciousness manifest and transact as a jiva etc so these are the points uh, i i remember and so basically so what is this consciousness all these five points i can tell and then antar bahishya tat sarvam vyapya narayana sthitah etc so basically when consciousness is inside and outside and like that it has been told uh, elsewhere also and therefore consciousness has no boundary anything which is simultaneously inside and outside definitely it has no boundary what is inside cannot be outside and what is outside suppose if it is not inside then definitely it has certain limitation certain boundaries well if simultaneously if anything is available is inside outside like that well it has no boundary like a space and therefore anyway this is uh, so basically uh, uh, so the, but outside yes that's true the outside you cannot experience this consciousness as consciousness outside you experience consciousness as existent principle that's all it is because existence is all pervading well so outside you experience the existence principle but uh, basically consciousness alone is this existence and therefore that is the jagat karanam etc so yasmin well yasmin means in this in this consciousness which is existence principle and all the worlds are placed now all the worlds are placed how like a clip is placed on a table then there are two things then there are two things then if there are two things definitely one is limited by other and the other is limited by the first one and therefore then where is the question of telling it as all pervading and therefore how this worlds are placed in a consciousness consciousness and world are two different things consciousness that is jagat karanam ishvara and world are two different things that is other religion that's a christianity that's a christianity god and the world yeah they have said god has created worlds karanam god and the world allah and the world muslims vedanta does not uh, say he, they say don't use two words god and the world either use one thing and better to use is god not god and the world you can say at the most no we want to use two words okay god in the world okay that's okay god in the world then give example you you are sometime giving some abstract ideas like the wave in water not a clip in a, a table or on a table not like like wave in water wave in water wave stands for all names and forms the world water stands for the essence ekam nityam saram satyam right other is fleeting waves are fleeting ever changing but the essence of every wave is this water this is one which is the essence of all the waves which is which is which is not changing and which cannot be negated you can negate the wave you need not it it is all it is changing all automatically yeah so the worlds are placed in a consciousness like waves are placed in what not there are two things is one thing therefore don't use 
God in the world. It is God. It is just water. It is just water. This is appearance. Ever-changing, negatable, non-essential and many are just appearances of one water. Consciousness or existence alone, which is Jagat Karan, which is Ishvara, alone appears in all these names and forms which are like waves. Many, non-essential, non-tangible, but uh, and anityam. Well, they are changing and which are negated also. So, this is how we have to understand this Lokaha Nihita. Anyway, and then it says Tadetad uh, Aksharam Brahma. Well, and that Karanishwara is Aksharam Brahma, which is which is Nityam. Ek, aksharam means Nityam. Ksharam means which, which undergoes, I mean, which, which will die, etc. So, nash, nash, I mean, which undergoes a destruction. Ksharam. Ksharati means actually it is, it is dying. Aksharam. That's a very popular word in, in Mundaka Upanishad for Brahman. And so, Tadeta the Aksharam Brahma, well, which is, uh, which does not undergo any decay, means which is Nityam, we have already told you. And which is Brahman, which is, is all pervading. So, time wise limitless, space wise limitless, etc. And Tadetat. With that, that Karanam, everyone says, all religious people live in this world. When they want to talk about Ishwara, their fingers go up. Tat. Tat means which is paroksham, which is, which, is not av- which is not available here. That's all. Which is not available here, which transcends everything, this ephemeral world and somewhere else, some in some loka. In, indicated by word Tat. Tat means that Ishwara, Jagat Karanam, Ishwara, which you believe as a Tat, is actually a Tat. Tat Eta is a, is a fantastic thing. Because after telling this much also, Jagat Karanam, Ishwara, when we talk, want to talk about, we raise our hand, finger. That Ishwara. No, 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 no. Tat Eta. That Jagat Karanam, Ishwara is this most intimate one. Sannihitasya, which is most proximate one. Which is, which is a non-changing witness consciousness well, which has manifested in this heart which is available as the most prox- proximate I that I is Tadetat that Jagat Karan Vishwara is this Etat means this is this or you can say that Jagat Karan Vishwara is this also Etat means this means I can tell this also or that Jagat Karan Vishwara is I. So indicating Tadetat. Aksharam Brahma, which is Nityam and which is all pervading. Brahman means which is all pervading. Is this, in this, all the lokas are, all the worlds are placed. All the bodies, gross, subtle, all the bodies are placed. All the worlds are placed. Like waves are placed in. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om